Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A few years ago, the BBC produced a television show, a weekly television show, where family members would approach a psychologist and arrange for an intervention. And on the appointed day, the psychologist and the family members would arrive at a flat or a lovely brownstone or sometimes a larger house on some beautiful grounds. And from the outside, the flat or the brownstone or the lovely larger house on the beautiful grounds looked pristine and neat. It wasn't until you opened the door and walked in that the concern, the cause for the intervention was readily and immediately apparent. Right beyond the door was chaos and mayhem. Right inside the door from Floor to ceiling were boxes and bins and piles of clothes and wrapped up aluminum foil and newspapers. From floor to ceiling, things were crowded and completely out of hand. There would be a full functioning kitchen, but in these houses, the inhabitant would be cooking on a hot plate on a nightstand. Things, memories, old newspapers cluttered the entire space. There was no way to walk through. It was unsanitary and disgusting and dangerous. And the psychologist and the loved ones would come in and try to talk to the person about this way that they were living. Now, neighbors might not have any idea what was going on in that house. And the people that these, their co-workers, had no idea because they would manage to keep themselves clean enough and go to work and operate in their offices, in their cubicles with people, and they would never know what was going on back in that house. But their life was incredibly restricted. If they had children, the children could go to sleepovers and have birthday parties at their friend's house, but they could never, never bring friends over to their own house. And there was an episode where a grandfather so wanted his granddaughter to come and spend the night with him, and his daughter, who loved him dearly, said, Dad, she can't come. It's not safe here. Something could fall on her, and you'd never find her. And there were some older, older people, and their children were terribly concerned about them. They said, if you fall, minutes, life-saving minutes will be lost as the EMTs try to get to you. Week after week, there would be episodes of this. And you may know that after a while, America picked up on this same notion and started the, the series Hoarders. And it's fascinating. It's one of those kind of things where you look and you say, I can't believe I'm watching this, and you turn back. And, and it's fascinating. It's fascinating because you can't believe that they can find people living this week week after week after week. So it's a pervasive problem. And you can't believe it because can these people see how limited and constricted their lives are. I mean, their home and their sanctuary is nothing but a trap. I mean, they don't have space to breathe. It's a lovely home, and it's all obscured by their inability to let some things go. They're holding on so tightly to things they think have a value. And you can tell. In the conversations, you can tell that they know something's awry, but they're just overwhelmed. I mean, they can't throw out one thing to move to the next thing. 
they are so overwhelmed by this limited, constricted life. These shows came to my mind this week because for the last two weeks, our scripture has been dealing with and holding up to us the notion of dwelling and dwelling places. Do you remember last week? The gospel, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God and God came to dwell among us came to be with us. And you remember parts from Matt's sermon where he was talking about how God came to dwell with us and there was no room. There was no room. I mean, it's a little baby. It doesn't take that much room. There was no room at the end. There was no room in the entire city for God to dwell with us. The people were holding on so tightly to things that they thought were so important they couldn't make room for God himself to dwell among us. Imagine. Imagine if the inn owner had had the ability to put aside, to shove aside some of the things he was valuing so tightly and say, my wife and I will sleep out back. Have our bedroom. Can you imagine? For generations, they could say, to their children and their grandchildren. The Son of God was born in our bedroom. Imagine the blessing on that household. And today we hear it wasn't just the end. It wasn't just the city of Bethlehem. There was no room for God in the entire country. Herod said he cannot exist here. He must be extinguished. What if Herod had been able to put aside and put down and just scooch over a little bit that, that idea of what it meant to be king and have power? What if he had just made a little room and said, my gosh, when the wise men came and said, prince of peace, wonderful counselor, what if he had been able to say, he's here in my land, I have access to him? Come be one of my advisors Come tell me the direction you want us to go. If Herod had been able to say that, how would we remember Herod today? No room. No room for God to dwell among us. And it wasn't just then. It seems to be our lot even now. I wonder. I wonder off in heaven and throughout the world, the Holy Trinity, do they look down on us, Father, Son, and Spirit, looking, wanting to look away, looking again, just not believing? Don't they see what limited, restricted lives they're living? Can they just make a start? Can they put down some of this stuff and let us in? What their lives could be like, what their dwelling places could be like. One of the things that I really appreciated about the BBC series was that the psychologist would come and speak to the people and be very kind and very practical. And she or he would say, you don't have to turn your entire life upside down. You can just make a start. You don't have to keep your loved one's 40 shirts and his 50 ties. What we can do is we can make a quilt out of a few of them, and you can wrap them around you and hold on to those memories and be worn by them. You don't have to keep every single newspaper scrap. We can take some of those away. We can make a shadow box. You don't have to become something you're not. You just have to let go a little bit, create a little space. And they would say, you don't have to do it alone. Because if you could do it alone, you would have done it alone. You're overwhelmed now. We can do this together. You need a community to help create the space and live into this new life. 
And that's the same dynamic that faces us today. God, his son and spirit want to dwell with us. They just need a little room and we have so much we're holding on to. They can't climb over it to get to us. So how do we create just a little space, a little time? We don't have to go live in caves like the Desert Fathers, and we don't have to go live in monasteries, but we do have to create some space in our lives, and we can do it together. I mean, that's what a church is for, to offer prayers together, to offer classes together, to think about God in some different ways, to help instruct our children. It's all here. We have to show up. We have to do at least that to create the space. But then we can go together. And why would we want to? Ah, oh, brothers and sisters, listen to this. How dear to you is, how dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and a longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory no good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and a longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Surely we can make just a little path, a little path, a little space through all the activity and other claims on our time and our hearts, just a little. 